Hey ladies and gentlemen, George here, and um, what I'd like to do today is give you a comparative view of basic movement um, between uh, Guard Kit and Advanced Squad Leader. What are the major differences? Well, let's see. Well, I can move this up and down so I don't have to uh, wedge my camera differently in order for you to see the data. It's just that uh, now things are going up and down. Hold on, there you go. Now you can see some of the major differences. So before we even go there, it's important to grasp that in um, both games, multi-man counters or infantry have movement factors, uh, whereas vehicles have movement points. Uh, but not all vehicles have movement points, and especially in the advanced game, there are motorcycles, uh, actually cavalry and carts, and in certain cases, maybe boats. Ah, cavalry is my, the example that stands out in my mind uh, the most, where cavalry have movement factors, just like infantry. And why is there a distinction between movement factors and movement points? Well, a very generalized uh, answer would be is because the amount of movement factors, which is a basic four that infantry have, depending on how much they expand, can af consequently affect the amount of moon points of, uh, uh, available to vehicles once that infantry become passengers or riders. Very important to grasp. So uh, usually we have four movement factors for a multi-man counter, and then to do certain actions with the uh, vehicle as riders, the vehicle has to expend a quarter um, of, of its moving points to onboard, uh, uh, onboard uh, infantry. And subsequent to that, depending on how many uh, movement factors the um, infantry that is now a rider or a passenger has expended, will affect ultimately the amount of movement points available for that vehicle carrying them. That's a pretty convoluted uh, uh, explanation, but I guess you'll get the picture, it'll click. Once you read the rules with respect to passengers, riders, and crew, and how the, the relationship between one and the other uh, exists. Now, so, the basic things that are, the basic concept that is available in both is multi-man counters have moving factors, four moving factors. The movement points that a vehicle has is depicted on um, the counter. Now I see my camera has turned purple. I'm just going to turn that off. There you go, and you get a full view of, um, of the video. I've been having technical difficulties like you wouldn't believe, and I think they're Microsoft related, uh, Microsoft slash OBS related, um, and I apologize for that. Uh, the audio should be clear. I hope uh, that I cleared that issue up. Um, and let's see if I turn come back. Uh, oh, it looks like I've been abducted by aliens. No problem. Anywho, going back to the crux of the, the matter, um, established that uh, infantry have, have uh, movement factors, vehicles have movement points. Now there's different movement types that ag exist at the starter kit level that don't exist in ASL, but there's also at least one movement type, assault move, that exists in starter kit, but entails certain differences in the ASL scheme of things. 
The other thing, though, that is very important to note is that you have in both starter kit and advanced squad leader uh, a chart that's similar to chart A4 in the advanced game. And basically what this tells you is the amount of movement factors uh, that are available to you given the type of stack that you're moving, depending on whether it's a single man counter or a multi-man counter or a combination of both, and um, the uh, movement points. So depending on how much, wait a second, not movement points, but portage points. So depending on how much portage points the unit is carrying or the units are carrying, um, that will determine how much movement factors are left. Okay, so now with no further ado, let's go to our board and look at some examples. So with Assault Move, I'm going to modify the situation a little bit differently, and I'm going to put a unit here, Boink. Let's say the objective for this, uh, these uh, units here, the allies, is to capture the headquarters here. Now, you can see, for those of you that are familiar with both games, that the top map is Board 1 of the Advanced Game, and this is a starter kit uh, a starter kit board. Let's take a look at which board it actually is. Board U as in United States or Uniform. Okay. Now, Assault Move. Let's start with starter kit. Let's say this fellow here decides to Assault Move to this hex because they're afraid that the 467 uh, might get, if they are declaring a, a non-assault movement, they might get a 4 uh, up two shot as opposed to a four up three shot. So in starter kit, what you're doing is you're declaring assault move and from UN3 to UM2. Boink. Uh, what he has to worry about in starter kit is do I have lost to the new uh, location? You draw a line of sight and you see you do have a uh, uh, line of sight to the location. It's clear, it does not touch the woods, and it would be a four up three shot which at this point, you have to ask yourself, is this shot worth taking? Because there's other units that haven't yet moved and I might have a better opportunity elsewhere. However, on the other side of the coin, you might say, okay, it's almost certain that somebody will have to traverse through this hex, so I might as well fire because there's no outside hindrances and lay down two residuals in there I'll be marked with first fire as long as I don't um, power and any other subsequent unit moving in this direction would have to take a longer route to the victory objective. Well, there is that thing in advanced squad leader uh, as well. However, there's also hip, hip shoot that can be used against you even if you are assault moving. And what that means is that this uh, squad has a line of sight of both to both hex sides of the open ground portion of these hexes. Therefore, he can declare a hip shoot where he'll have his firepower and get his minus two, uh, minus one uh, DRM. Minus one DRM because he is declaring assault move. Is it minus two? Ah, uh, that escapes me. Let's just roll in and see what happens, okay? Single roll, IFT. Uh, so that's a pretty good shot. So at the starter kit level, he would have rolled an 8 on a 4, which is a miss. At the ASL level, um, it would still be a miss if they fired um, if they fired at the unit in M3, but if they declared a hip shoot, it would be a 2 down 1 at least for first fire, not a, uh, a first fire moving in the open. So a 4 on the 4, or a 4 on the 2, would be a 1 morale check. And a 4 on the 4 is a 1 morale check. Oh well, 1 morale check, let's take it. Break. At the ASL level, of course, they would break and go back to there. But at the star kid level, they would have succeeded in going to that hex. Um, 
these are things that I, I miss when I play uh, Starter Kit. And to be perfectly frank with you, I play both games as standalone, and I do not like playing Starter Kit as uh, a type of segue. I hate segues. Um, as a type of, of an evolutionary path to, to uh, the advanced game. They're both good games in their own right, um, and it's actually up to you to decide whether you like the simplification of Starter Kit or you like the detailed complexity. And, and I'm not too sure complexity is a good word for advanced quality. Or you like the more detailed approach, um, the more detailed approach and more um, colorful approach to, of advanced squad leader. Hmm. So we did the assault move. All right. Now there's another item here. Um, let's reset the board, uh, unbreak this fellow. Uh, delete. I didn't talk about the LR, not that it matters. Okay. Now, let's talk about bypass movement bypass movement basically uh for a an infantry unit they can you uh they can use bypass buildings to go around buildings and woods only uh to this effect let's say this fellow here wants to reach there and he does not want to do this one two three and then he'll have to go late cx four five to there instead what it can do is and say bypass for one hex side, one to there, paying the open ground hex, him, two, three, four, and he has achieved this location, he has reached his destination without having to go CX. Um, again, you have to worry about whether uh, they can get a, a hip shoot on you, but chances are uh, in this case, this unit would have been able to successfully move there. Similarly, uh, trans transport or vehicles can bypass a, a hex side, and there needs to be some open ground space between the obstacle and the hex side. Um, according to the rule in advanced squad leader, it has to be the the width of or of the, of the height of um, the counter. So basically, how thick the cardboard is. It will be the uh, space uh, between the obstacle and the hex side in order for you to successfully do that. Now, how you do it in Vassal, there's been numerous Game Squad discussions on that. I don't want to go into it, but again, this would be simple. In this case, you would have to roll for mechanical reliability. No problem. Starts for one, two, three per hex side. So double the open ground hex per hex side. Um, for our vehicle and they can even stay in bypass in the open ground there so very interesting um, dilemmas and very interesting uh, differences between the basic game and the basic game the starter kit level and the advanced level uh, the other thing that I, I noted in my chart was same hex elevation so in this case here Let's take a look at, oops, pardon me for that uh, up, uh, upside down turvy thingy majiggy. So let's remove all the moves and say, let's also put these guys on the side and these guys on the side here. Let's take a look at build, this building versus that building. What's the difference other than the art? They're both two hex buildings. They're not a row house. So what is the major difference between one and the other is here, this is a advanced squad leader board known as the first squad uh, uh, from this first scenario ever designed the guards counter attack. And um, it takes place in Stalingrad. Here is a typical uh, two hex building or multi hex location building in starter kit. And you need to be aware of the difference because um, when you do decide to go to the advanced squad leader level, if you do decide that that is your choice, a player can pull a fast one on you because 
in advanced quality, this is a, a one and a half level building. So you can have a situation where you, you this fellow will be visible to you. And I'm just going to put this on the side, but pretend this is in this hex, okay? And this fellow here is hip. So when you're playing with multi-level buildings and hip, and you're coming from the starter kit transition, uh, let's say you expel this guy out from that hex, you take over the building, you forget to do mop-up and, and a search, and this guy pops up at the end of the scenario, says, whoa, look at this, ha ha, you forgot to do a mop-up and a search, by, and actually you did not control that building, I had a unit there. And that's a perfectly legitimate um, tactic, a bit underhanded, right? You're playing on, on the person's lack of, of uh, rules or forgetfulness, and you end up not a nice, uh, nice uh, uh, thing to pull on somebody because you're pulling the wool over their eyes, but you know, uh, what was that Russian tactic uh, that they have, a Maskarova, where you know, you you do uh, filming for a reason, and you hip is the same thing. All right, same level, um, same level uh, elevation is another one uh, that we we're talking about. So you got this, level one, and also for buildings with staircases, I was about to call them elevators, um, staircases you have even level two, and by only by SSR you can also have level three. Now, the other thing, speaking of SSRs, the other thing that uh, comes into play is building fortifications. And you need to be careful with building fortifications because at the starter kit level, um, at the starter kit level, if, especially if you're using um, Vassal, um, they come into play only by, by SSR, as far as I know, and people would be tempted to use this as an indicator that that building is fortified. And that would be something to this effect would be uh, not according to the rules because uh, fortified buildings have to be uh, done from the ground up. You have to worry about that in starter kit because there are no one and a half level buildings. And to make things worse, you can end up in a cellar as well at this uh, level. The other thing about starter kit is um, sometimes or more often than not, um, when you have a unit in a fortified location, um, this fortified location needs to be breached or the unit guarding it has to leave it in, before you can occupy it. So that would be uh, at, um, at the advanced level, but I'm not sure how that and is entailed in starter kit. Um, I wasn't familiar with at the starter kit level that um, that fortified buildings uh, add breach or not. I'm pretty sure they don't, and it, they just act as an additional modifier. Uh, but in terms of occupation, I know that the advanced water leader rules uh, have detailed rules pertaining to that. Now remember the little relationship between movement factors and movement points. Uh, typically, at the starter kit level, AFVs, armored fighting vehicles, and infantry are standalone. Um, they cannot move and do an armor assault, like so, whereas in the advanced level, you can. And the other thing into play is, let's take a look at that counter. You see that it has 15 per tash points. This half track and at the advanced level can actually carry these guys as passengers. 
And the mechanics behind it, I, in general, I explained it before, is that this unit moves into that hex for one, two, up a daisy into the um, into the half track as passengers, and subsequently to that, um, this unit uh, can the mo mostly can have its half its portage point, uh, half its movement points left if it wants to subsequently move. So that's another thing that you need to uh, be weary of. And here, uh, another example is that uh, half tracks can even tow uh, a vehicle at the advanced level, none of that at the starter kit level. So I also briefly talked about dash just before in this example where you know, it is moving here, moving it, moving there. So let's let's uh, go back to our little summary <clears throat> and do a nice recap. <clears throat> I'm losing my voice. Holy cow! <clears throat> Excuse me. So <clears throat> rasp and raspy voice, the two go together. So just to recap, there are fundamental differences in movement between starter kit <clears throat> and advanced squad leader. Serves me right for not having any water or beverage nearby. Um, to recap, Assault Move, for example, it's available in both uh, games. However, you need to be aware of how to um, take advantage of the um, rules that give you an advantage over uh, Assault Move, especially if, um, if the unit is Assault Moving and traversing a hex where open ground is completely uh, in your line of sight. Bypass movement. Again, at the ASL level, this exists and it serves you to uh, reach your objective quicker, usually bypassing, uh, usually and mostly only, to bypass um, building and woods location. Same hex elevation, you have to be weary about it in two respects. One, for victory, uh, uh, victory conditions and hip, you have to be aware that uh, at the ASL level, two hex buildings can have uh, are one and a half levels. And if that building also has a staircase and can be a two level building, so we'll have ground level one, level two, and by SSR, it could have level three. Difficult terrain, I may have not gone into that into detail, but there's one uh, important difference. Um, in the advanced phase, if a, if a, a multi-man unit uh, uses or expends all its movement factors in the advanced phase, it's CX. However, at the starter kit level, uh, with a leader, that multi-man counter can expend four movement factors and not necessarily BCX. Don't quote me on that. That's why I've, I've maybe not gone into much detail. Um, consult the rules to make sure. Uh, PRC, so passengers, riders, and crew. That exists in Advanced Squad Leader. I gave you a very um, quick example. Um, and I don't want to bore you with rule book reading and all that stuff. You can find uh, loading and unloading in two chapters, actually, in the advanced uh, toilet liter uh, rule book in chapter D and C as in Charlie. And dash was also a consequence of a consequence uh, or uh, 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 explained at the same time as assault move which is it is a type of movement but it also triggers uh, potentially trigger a a countermeasure called uh, hip shoot that can help you uh, that can help you um, mitigate the advantages of assault move now with that said I'm going to conclude my video here and I hope you enjoyed it it's a good 24 minutes, and uh, it's my second take actually on this because somehow and mysteriously the audio went dead. Um, and in this case, 
my camera um, went purple. Um, but that's more or less what I had to say. And um, I might do more comparisons between SK and a ASL. Um, we'll see how it goes and how people like this video. Uh, if you have any other suggestions as to what you'd like to see in the channel, please comment below. In the meantime, again, the channel has grown. I'll bite by a small margin, but every, uh, every, every subscriber and view counts. And thank you for so much for your support. And I hope to do a second video as well. Um, it depends on how I overcome my weekly challenges. I hope I do. And with that said, see you soon. Thanks and have a great week ahead.